Father God, we ask for your special graces to rest on us on this awesome day. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, whose goodness fills our hearts with joy. Blessed are you who have brought us together in this sacred place, the FBI Academy Quantico, this day to work in harmony and peace. Strengthen each one of us with your grace and wisdom. Thank you for your story in our lives as we write our history this morning. May you be evident on every page. Por la amor de Dios, for the love of God, amen. Before we continue, let's take a moment to remember Carlos Wolf and Sandra Cohen, who we lost this week as well as the 24 law enforcement professionals who died in the line of duty since this session began. Please join me in a moment of silence in their honor. Please be seated. So in the early 1930s, amid prohibition, the height of the gangster era, there were loud voices calling for a national police force in the United States. The FBI and the major city chiefs and sheriffs offered as an alternative to open a national police training school where we would bring back the finest leaders in law enforcement around the country and create a place where they would exchange best practices and lessons learned. That was the start of this great partnership. During the 270th session, of the FBI National Academy. Over 3,800 academic credit hours were completed. The men and women graduating here today are the result of a continuous commitment to improve, working side by side, bettering ourselves and our profession. It's my pleasure to introduce today's distinguished members of the platform party. If you're able, please hold your applause until after everyone has been introduced. A warm welcome to the President of the United States, the Attorney General, of the United States, the director of the FBI. Our class spokesperson, Craig Wiles, seated in the second row, Greg Chirundolo, DEA special agent in charge here at Quantico. Scott Dumas, president of the National Academy Associates and NA Session 226 graduate. Jeff Walker, deputy assistant director. Don Alway, deputy assistant director. Val Parlave, executive assistant director of the FBI. In the third row, Jose Villegas, FBI Chaplain. Jeff McCormick, Unit Chief of the National Academy Unit. Steve Lehman, Associate Dean, University of Virginia. And John Jarvis, Dean of Academics here at Quantico. Please welcome today's platform party. So in honor of the President's commitment to be here today, 270 carried uh, one, of our yellow brook, one of our yellow bricks uh, through the six-mile crucible event, our yellow brick road run. Uh, and so the class knows the President just signed that brick uh, backstage, and that will be exhibited here at Quantico in your honor. Today we also have graduates of past NA sessions, some representing multiple generations of graduates. Would the past graduates please stand and be recognized? Each graduating class selects a spokesperson to represent them. The spokesperson for 270 is Craig Wiles. Craig Wiles' career spans 37 years. He currently serves as the Associate Special Agent in Charge for the DEA New Orleans Division, where he has operational oversight for 525 agents, task force officers, diversion investigators, and professional staff members in Louisiana, Arkansas, Alabama, and Mississippi. 
He has been assigned to the Bahamas, Southwest Asia, and major cities throughout the United States. He's conducted high-profile drug investigations in the United States and Afghanistan. He's the recipient of the DEA Administrator's Award and received the first DEA Purple Heart from injuries sustained during the 1996 Atlanta Olympics. Craig has been married to Lori for 27 years. They have a daughter, Ashley, and a son, Austin. Please welcome the 270th spokesperson, Craig Wiles. It's going to be a tough act to follow, I see. <clears throat> uh, good morning. On behalf of the FBI National Academy, Session 270, we welcome our distinguished guests. President Trump, welcome, sir. We are humbled. Your presence here demonstrates your strong commitment to law enforcement and your strong commitment to the citizens and the communities that we serve. I must tell you, sir, a few days ago, we were assembled here in this auditorium and the announcement was made that you would be attending and this room erupted with energy. Attorney General Session, thank you for your strong leadership and your commitment to law enforcement, sir. Director Ray, thank you for meeting with us and sharing your thoughts on partnerships and the importance of relationships. We could not agree more, sir. Together, we can accomplish anything. We also want you to know that you have one of the finest training staffs right here at Quantico. Thank you. We also welcome the members of the FBI training team here, the National Academy Associates Association, and the many challenged, beautiful people that work for service source and goodwill who every day work tirelessly to ensure that this academy runs smoothly. 270 welcomes the many active and retired law enforcement officers as well as our military as represented here today by General Kelly. We welcome the former National Academy graduates, including my father, Ralph Wiles, who 40 years ago this month stood at this very same moment and spoke to his class, 110, as a class president. Dad, I listened to you that day, and I've tried to live up to every word. I love you and thank you for your service. Most importantly, we would like to extend our deepest gratitude and our love to our families. Helen Keller told us, alone we can do little, together we can do so much. To my classmates, you have my highest respect. In my 37 years of law enforcement service, I have worked with the finest, and you truly are a team above all others. Because of this experience, I've never been more enthusiastic and optimistic about the future of our profession. We have come a long way since reporting as 224 individuals representing 220 different police agencies and 48, from 48 states in the District of Columbia and 20 different countries. From Malta to Argentina, from San Diego to Boston, from Palm Beach Gardens, Florida to St. Angelo, Texas, we have learned that the only true difference as guardians is the shape of our badge. We know very well that this profession is a calling to serve. We understand the importance of doing the right thing, both in our personal and professional lives. Congratulations to newly promoted Captains Robert Linky, Kevin Laney, Rich Boyd, and Chief Eric Miller for being those examples. Today, leadership is built on strong ethical base blended with empathy and emotional intelligence. Our continued selfless service will transform the way the world looks at law enforcement. Without knowing it, the poet Raymond Chandler described 270 when he said, down these mean streets a man must go who is not himself mean, who is neither tarnished nor afraid. He is the hero. He is everything. 
The last 11 weeks have been a diverse dialogue on successful leadership, community engagement, collaborative partnerships, which leads to legitimacy, transparency, and trust in every community around the world, with a focus on constitutional policing, which protects the rights of all individuals as much as it promotes public safety and the quality of life. We learn that we can positively shape and impact our profession. We have experienced so many positive leadership events, whether it was walking the grounds of the 9-11 Memorial, navigating the waters around the Statue of Liberty, or visiting Independence Hall, the birthplace of our democracy. Andre, Pete, Mike, and Tom, thank you for those lifelong memories. The Academy motto of knowledge, courage, integrity demands that as leaders, we enable our people to unleash their potential. Today, our profession is facing challenges. We must remember what we stand for and we must always do the right thing. We must always follow our internal values of excellence, behavior, ethics, and we must never forget our obligation to our profession, our citizens, and our families. We understand the importance of relationship and that our character is the most important trait. In fact, it's expected in all of our leaders. I learned from my parents the importance of honor, honor your faith, honor your family, and honor yourself. Make no mistake, we don't have to look far to realize our value. The world has continued to turn. Just since we reported there has been two terrorist attacks in New York City that killed eight and wounded many others. A lone gunman attacked a peaceful concert in Las Vegas, leaving 58 people dead and 546 injured. Chris Little, our hearts continue in our thoughts and prayers for the members of your agency. A cowardly gunman attacked a service in Sutherland Springs, Texas, killing 26 and wounding 20 others. A colleague of mine was killed in Kabul, Afghanistan from a suicide bombing, reminding us that evil lives around the world. There has been over 10,000 drug overdose deaths. And 24 law enforcement heroes have ki been killed in service to this great country. The most recent losses of Deputy Chief State Fire Marshal Sandra Cohen, along with FBI Supervisory Special Agent Carlos Wolf in Rockville, Maryland, and of Officer Kenneth Copeland, San Marcos Police Department, Texas. These remind us that our primary mission is always to protect life. This will never change for you and I. Although these crimes offend our values and everything that we stand for, they define our resolve. As first responders, we will always run to the fight. Dr. Martin Luther King said the ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in moments of comfort and convenience, but where he stands at times of challenge and controversy. For you and I, what we have seen cannot be unseen. There are so many victims and so many damaged families. They require and they expect that we operate every day at our very best. We know that these numbers can be overwhelming for the faint of heart. However, though, although professionalism, dedication, and perseverance to service for many are just words, for you and me, these words describe our fabric. In fact, they're part of our DNA. It is the relationships developed here that strengthen our skills to face the many evils that threaten our communities. There is no greater calling than this honorable profession, that of a law enforcement officer. However, although this is our calling to serve, we must always remember our families. It is from their support we achieve success. We know that the last 11 weeks have not been easy for you. Please know that we have shared many loving conversations about families from sports to school. In fact, Rich Bilikoski's wife had a baby boy this past Saturday. Eric Hill learned that his wife is due in April with a baby boy. However, we also shared the loss of two mothers and a grandmother. Ken Murray, Al Chandler, Eduardo Martinez, know that you always remain in our thoughts and prayers. Our prayers continue for Unit Chief Jeff McCormick and his wife. Jeff continued to leave this session while supporting his wife, his beautiful wife, who is undergoing cancer treatment. 270 represents hundreds of families who have sacrificed more than we will ever know while always cheering us on. I can tell you that during the many of the challenges, I focused on the faces of my family to get me through. Today, we celebrate our parents, our spouses, and our children. 
You see, although this is a chapter for you and I, our families are the ones who kept the lights on and continue to ensure that life's challenges were faced and met. Because of them, we are the lucky few who can say every day, we live our dream. Dave Willis said, family isn't defined only by last names or by blood. It's defined by commitment and by love. It means having each other's backs. It means choosing to love each other, even on those days when you struggle to like each other. It means never giving up on each other. This became 270's ethos as we live this message every day in the classroom, the challenges, and on the yellow brick road. My parents taught me that true empathy requires that you step outside of your own emotions to view things entirely from the perspective of the other person. We're all blessed to have a loving support system. Never forget and make no mistake. For you and I, this is exactly where we were always supposed to be. Our spouses and children had no choice. Today and every day, we should celebrate their unselfish devotion, and we commit to them that we will never miss an opportunity to tell them that we love them. I encourage you to spoil your cheering team at every chance. As it has been said, what we do in life echoes in eternity. Continue to honor your faith, your family, and yourself. Coach Saban said it the best, every day, every play, the right way. And 270 issues a warning to evil. Run and hide if you must, but don't get comfortable. 270 is our family, and we never give up. May God continue to bless each of you and empower you with the confidence and belief that every day you make a difference. Thank you for your service, and I salute you for your dedication and courage. So, Director Ray, as the Assistant Director of your Training Division, I certify to you that all present members of National Academy Session 270 have met or exceeded all requirements for graduation. Ladies and gentlemen, would you please join me in welcoming the Director of the FBI. Thanks, Dave. You know, the 269th may have been the first National Academy class that I actually met with, but this class, the 270th, is my first National Academy graduation. Uh, and for that reason, I particularly enjoyed all of our conversations last week. So I'm really excited to be here and glad to see you all today. I'd like to extend a special welcome to President Trump and Attorney General Sessions, both of whom we'll hear from in a moment. And I want to thank the families here today. Everybody in this room knows firsthand that our families are the support system that makes law enforcement work. You help us make it through every day, and you're waiting for us when we come home every night. So thank you for being here, and thank you for all the sacrifices and support that you've brought. You know, in 1935, when the FBI Police Training School opened its doors, to its first 23 students. I'm not sure anyone imagined we'd all be here all these years later watching our 270th graduation. You came to Quantico 10, almost 11 weeks ago as strangers, but you leave today as lifelong friends. And those friendships mean that you can pick up the phone day or night anywhere around the world and find someone who will stand beside you in the toughest of circumstances or provide some insight that you might not have considered. And forging those friendships, those partnerships, is what the National Academy does best. As the world becomes smaller and the perils loom larger, we've learned that a threat to one of us can be a threat to all of us. We've learned that working together isn't just the best option, it's really the only option. And for more than 80 years, this program has served as a bridge between state and local law enforcement and international law enforcement. And today, you join the ranks of more than 50,000 graduates from more than 170 countries. To put that in perspective, there are more than 50,000 of those yellow bricks on desks and bookcases all around the world. 
more than 50,000 bricks that have helped pave the way for global law enforcement cooperation. That cooperation begins here, but it can't end here. Your bricks don't just represent a challenge, they are a challenge. A challenge to build on this foundation after you leave the academy. A challenge to stay in touch and to continue helping each other throughout your careers. So this session is ending, but the work is far from done. It's up to you to ensure that the network that you see in this auditorium grows larger and stronger and that yellow brick road grows longer and wider. Your jobs aren't easy, but today you have more than 200 new partners standing by, ready to help you in any way they can. And that bond, that bond of trust and teamwork represents the best of who we are and what we can accomplish when we work together. According to the FBI history books, it's been quite a while since we hosted a president for a National Academy graduation. In 1957, President Eisenhower addressed the 60th session. And five years later, in October of 1962, President Kennedy delivered remarks at the graduation of the 70th. And last, President Nixon spoke at the graduations of both the 83rd session in 1969, which was actually held in the East Room of the White House, and the 87th session in 1971. So after a 46-year hiatus, it is a great honor to welcome a president back to the National Academy. As I was saying to you backstage, Mr. President, the National Academy is one of the FBI's crown jewels. You know, in February, President Trump addressed the Major County Sheriff's Association and called for a great national partnership, a new beginning between law enforcement and the citizens we serve. And by joining us today, he is renewing that call. Mr. President, there is no better place to talk about the importance of partnerships than here at the National Academy surrounded by some of the finest law enforcement leaders from here at home and around the world. And to the outstanding graduates of the 270th, thank you again for being part of the National Academy, for your support of the FBI, and for all you do and all you will do for law enforcement. And now, to introduce the President, please join me in welcoming my friend, the Attorney General of the United States, Jeff Sessions. Thank you, Chris, and for that introduction and for inviting us to this fabulous academy. The American people appreciate what you do. The American people have always supported law enforcement, and this is a special occasion indeed for these graduates and your families. I have the honor to introduce someone who supports law enforcement officers just as he promised 100 percent. Donald Trump ran for office as a law and order candidate. I believe that is one of the biggest reasons he won. The American people spoke loud and clear. They want to restore the rule of law and they want to be safe. Now he is governing as a law and order president. He is fulfilling his campaign promises and he's delivering results for the American people. The day I was sworn in as Attorney General, he sent us an order. Got to know he knows how to send a clear order. The order was reduce crime in America. Not preside over increasing crime in America, but to reduce it. We embrace that goal, as I know you do, and we are doing that with the indispensable help of our state and local law enforcement partnerships like those represented by these outstanding officers here today. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our nation's highest law enforcement official, the President of the United States. Thank you, wow.
Thank you very much, everybody. That's a lot of years since the last president. And we'll be back. And thank you to Attorney General Sessions. Thank you, Director Ray, Assistant Director Resch, for hosting me here at the FBI National Academy to address our wonderful local police and sheriffs from all over America for a special honor. And it's an honor to stand here today with the incredible men and women of law enforcement. Thank you. We're here to celebrate your graduation from the National Academy at Quantico. For over 80 years, this rigorous and world-renowned program has trained America's most dedicated local law enforcement officers from all across the country. So respected. Let me begin by saying to each member of the graduating class, congratulations. You left home for 11 weeks to enroll in this program because you love your jobs, you love your communities, and you love your country. Earlier this week, you completed the harrowing six-mile yellow brick road. Just sign that beautiful brick. <laughs> I just signed that brick. Designed for the Marines to push even the toughest to their limit. You endured muddy waters, barbed wire fences, icy creeks, steep hills, and so much more, knowing that your elite training will help save lives. The training you received at Quantico will give you that extra edge you need to defuse a threat, to disarm a criminal, and to deliver a child safely to her mother's arms. I am here not only to congratulate you, but to honor you for your courage and for your devotion. And I want you to know that with me as your president, America's police, will have a true friend and loyal champion in the White House, more loyal than anyone else can be. I tell you. Thank you. Thank you. I also want to take a moment to speak to all of the law enforcement families here today. You make tremendous sacrifices. American families can sleep soundly at night because of the burden that you carry for all of us. So on behalf of all Americans, to every law enforcement family here today, and all across the nation, thank you, thank you, thank you very much. And you do that under the most difficult conditions. You very rarely get the recognition you deserve, I can tell you that. But your families know what you deserve. And ultimately, that's the most important thing, isn't it? It's not a news story when our officers save a life, rescue a family, or stop a crime. It's just another day on the job. Yet, no matter the circumstances, you serve tirelessly, selflessly and heroically. You do it because you really believe in doing your duty and doing it properly. Being a police officer is not just a career, it's a calling. And I've seen it. I have so many friends that are police officers, so many people in the FBI. These are great, great people. These are really heroes for all of us. So thank you very much. And as we, as a country, must do a better job showing our police officers the respect and gratitude that you have earned, and we will do that. So when you return home to your local precincts, I want you to deliver a message to your fellow officers. The President of the United States has your back 100%. I will fight for you, and I will never, ever let you down, ever. 
Now, more than ever, we must support the men and women in blue. In the last two years, America has seen a tragic rise in violent crime. In 2015 and 2016, we witnessed the steepest two-year consecutive increase in murders in nearly half a century. And you look at what's going on in Chicago, what the hell is going on in Chicago? What the hell is happening there? For the second year in a row, a person was shot in Chicago every three hours. You don't think these people in this room can stop that? They'd stop that. They'd stop it. And just north of our nation's capital, in Baltimore, on average, someone was murdered nearly every day of this year. Police departments are overstretched, they're underfunded, and they're totally underappreciated, except by me. Instead of holding up our police as the role models and mentors they are, they have been subjected to malicious attacks on their character and their integrity. This anti-police sentiment is wrong, and it's dangerous, and we will not stand for it. Most concerning of all, we have seen an alarming increase in violent assaults carried out against our police officers. Last year, an officer was assaulted in America, on average, every 10 minutes. In 2016, more than 140 officers lost their lives serving in the line of duty. These deaths fill our hearts with pain and with grief. Every drop of blood spilled from our men and women in blue is a wound inflicted on our nation. And when a brother or sister in uniform is hurt, on that day, all of America bleeds blue. I want to send a message today to those who threaten violence against our police. We will protect those who protect us. And we believe criminals who kill police officers should get the death penalty. One of my first executive orders as President instructed the Department of Justice to take all necessary steps and legal action to protect law enforcement from acts of violence against them. The Department of Justice has also announced more than $98 million in grant funding to help your local police departments hire desperately needed new officers. Also, just as I promised, we are allowing our local police to access surplus military equipment, something the previous administration, for some reason, refused to do. Explain that one. Explain it to me, please. Never understood that one. Somebody out there can explain. Anybody want to stand up and explain it? That'd be tough. If we want to bring down violent crime then we must stand up for our police. All of us gathered here today share a common goal. We want every child to be able to walk safely home from school, and we want every mother and father to know that their children will be secure when they tuck them in at night. No family should have to worry about bullets flying through windows or gangs recruiting on street corners. Every American child should be able to grow up in a safe community, surrounded by a loving family, and preparing to embark on a bright, beautiful future. As President, my greatest duty is to protect our nation and to protect our people. As we have witnessed recently, America faces grave threats. Terrorists have struck in the streets and subways of New York City twice in a few months. Both terrorists 
came to our country through the dysfunctional immigration system that we are correcting, and rapidly. And one came through chain migration, chain migration. The other, visa lottery. They have a lottery. You pick people. Do you think the country's given us their best people? No. <laughs> what kind of a system is that? They come in by a lottery. They give us their worst people. They put them in a bin. But in his hand, when he's picking them, is the really the worst of the worst. Congratulations. You're going to the United States. Okay. <laughs> what a system. Lottery system. We're calling for Congress to end chain migration and to end the visa lottery system and replace it with a merit-based system of immigration. We want a system that puts the needs of American families, taxpayers, and security first. That is why I have also directed the federal government, law enforcement, to work closely with our state and local police to destroy criminal cartels like the savages of MS-13. Already this year, the Department of Justice has worked with partners in Central America to arrest and charge roughly 4,000 MS-13 members. And the Department of Homeland Security has arrested nearly 800 MS-13 gang members and associates, an 83 percent increase from the previous year, and were much higher this year than we were last year and we'll get rid of them completely very soon, right? <laughs> right? <laughs> They're working hard. Earlier this year, ICE officers conducted the largest crackdown on criminal gangs in the history of our country. In just six weeks, ICE, these are great people too, great people, and the Border Patrol agents, great people, and our law enforcement partners arrested nearly 1,400 suspects and seized more than 200 illegal firearms and nearly 600 rounds of narcotics and over 600 pounds. It's a lot of stuff. Recently, prosecutions of criminal firearm possessions were up 23 percent. To any member of MS-13 listening, I have a message for you. We will find you, we will arrest you, we will jail you, we will do, throw you the hell out of the country. <laughs> I mean, somehow I like it better than jail. Jail, we have to take care of them. Who the hell wants to take care of them? <laughs> you know, the jail stuff is wonderful, but we have to pay for it, right? But these are killers. These are people that are sadists in many cases. We don't want them. We don't want them. They're getting out of here. Our cities should not be sanctuaries for criminals. They should be sanctuaries for Americans. It is our duty to serve the hardworking citizens of our country who raise our families, cherish our values, salute our flag, and make this land our home. These are the citizens you represent and these are the citizens you courageously protect. By the way, you are great people. You are incredible people. Just so you understand, you are great people doing an incredible job. And I hope your families know that. I'd say 90% of our, probably 90% agree, right? <laughs> the other 10%, that's not working out so well. <laughs> we heard from one such hero among us earlier today, your class spokesperson, DEA officer, Craig Wiles. It is truly amazing to see Craig's father sitting in the very seat where Craig himself sat 40 years ago when he was just 15 years old. Where is his father, by the way? Where is his father? Where's your father? There he is.
He's better looking than you, by the way. <laughs> it's a great story, though. It's fantastic. Thank you for being here. That's really nice. You're proud of your son, right? Good. So am I. That day, Craig watched his father speak at this podium. When he listened to his father's words, he was filled with pride and such devotion that at that moment, he too decided to become a law enforcement officer. Terrific. Today, it's incredible that his own children have joined us for this special moment. His daughter, Ashley, is carrying on the legacy of her father and grandfather. She now serves in law enforcement at the FBI. His son, Austin, is in college. And no matter what he chooses to do, I think we can confidently, and we really can with great confidence, say that this, he will always be better because of his father's lifelong example of selflessness and courage and of love. So thank you, Craig, and your family. It's a terrific story and really is a great honor to be with you. Thank you very much. But as I look out in the audience today, I see many young, bright faces. To them and to many other young Americans watching at home, of which there are many. You see, there's the fake news back there. Look, everybody. <laughs> fake news. No, actually, some of them are fine people. <laughs> about, let's see, who's back there? Yeah, about 30 percent. <laughs> you are the men and women who teach them what it means to be a police officer. You are always there for us. The men and women in blue, in the dark of night, in the rush of danger, you break down doors, race down alleys, chase down suspects, and bring down criminals. And you do it with strength and skill and pride. There's a reason that your children look up to you with their eyes full of awe and full of wonder. There's a reason that they rush to the window just to catch a glimpse of your sirens flashing by. Because to them, and to all of us, and to me, you are the guardians who keep us safe, who ward off danger, and who confront evil so that the good will always prevail. You represent the best of America, and you leave us with a debt we can never hope to repay. Today, we honor you. We thank you. And we know that by your example, some of the children here today and watching at home will be inspired to fill your shoes to continue your service, to follow in your footsteps, and to take the oath to carry the badge, to wear the shield, and to join the ranks of heroes. Thank you to our police. Thank you to our sheriffs. Thank you to the FBI. And thank you to our law enforcement families. God bless you all. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. 